19th of February, 2.38 p.m., Briar Road. It looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. Perfect! So let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes, and let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at the silver tip Iris gave him for us. Gave us. Yeah. Okay, let's give this to my boy. Uh, okay. Take this, my boy. Let's not look at it first, actually. Victoria uh, de Cratia, 1844. Is this what? Oh, 1844 is when this game takes place. Cool. She's got good writing for a 10 year old. <laughs> what? Uh, in the fourth grade, my teacher, who would call, you would call Miss T, uh, or who you, you'll call Miss T, would always give you, would always sing you out, uh, and some other kid. And with that happening, you would never want to do any work. The more work you didn't do, the more she would, uh, single you out. So it was an endless loop. Man, you should've, if, if you had your time back, what would you do? Would you go and, and try to focus more? Or what? I don't know. Actually, let, let's look at this first, because why not? This is a five shilling piece, isn't it? I believe it's called a crown. Yes, and you can train a Scotland Yard detective to do whatever you want. It's just a single one. I was supposed to be the most powerful ten-year-old in the world. How much is five shillings, by the way? Is it really worth much? Hmm, well, it's probably enough to buy all the chips in the expector could possibly eat in a whole month. Wow, that's greasy. It is, but oh man, it's good, I guess. Okay, let's just give it to you. There you go, man. Uh, Inspector Gregson, do you have a moment? I'm sorry to say, I don't. I'm a very busy man. Much too busy to uh, talk to a pair of foreign gadabouts, that's for sure. We have these for you. A present from Miss Iris Wilson. What? For me? Uh, for her ladyship? Her ladyship? Give that here at once! Come on, hand it over! That's for me. Oh, uh, don't wait for me to give it to you, will you? Uh, what was that coin exactly? It's a silver crown, obviously. But it's a lot more than that. It's, well, an appearance fee, that's what it is. An appearance fee? Oh, I see. You mean... That's right. For the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, her ladyship always offers me a little financial reward for featuring me, every time. Yes, of course. I know all about your exploits, Inspector. I read them avidly. Of course. I use them in aim without my my say, it so does make with a butt of a lot of unpleasant jokes, but still. I'm sorry, Inspector, that must be difficult for you. Never mind you that. Never you mind that. So, what do you want to know then, eh? Sorry? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. Trust that he won't be a problem, he says. Well, obviously it's not a problem. Go on, fire away. What do you want to do? Well, if you wouldn't mind, Inspector, we'd very much like to know the address of Mr. Natsumi's lodgings. Ah, oh, the little knife-wielding, mustache Japanese fellow. He lives in right old hovel just over there. Look! I'm also 500 subs, that's right. On the first floor of that house in the corner where that wreck of a bicycle was propped up. But that's it? That's his house? That is nearby indeed. If I remember rightly, the landlord is a Mr. John G uh, Garideb. John Garideb. Is that, a, is that a pun? I don't know. Right, well... If you go see her, if you see her again, make sure you give her ladyship my regards, you hear? I made it to tell her that Gregson sends his very best wishes. Don't worry, Inspector, we will. Goodbye for now, then. Long live her ladyship. Thank you, I guess. Well, at least he told us what we wanted to know before he left. Yes. So then, shall we go and see what we can find in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? Definitely. <laughs> I like this song. One time, um, one time I, at the beginning of the fourth grade year, walked up to Miss T's desk. Can't remember why, because it was years ago. But then, she said something mean to you, uh, and had you sit down at your desk and you cried because you were crying back then. I remember back when I was in grade five. I'm not in grade five because I'm not ten. You guys think I'm ten? I'm not ten. Um, I, um, me and my friend, we would always be like, "Oh yeah, my pencil's better than yours because it's it's long and it's sharp." Don't. I know what you're thinking. Don't. Just don't, okay? I know what you're thinking. And then I would go up to the desk and grab a pencil and then and then bring it back to my desk and be like, Haha, check this out, I got a better pencil. And then one day my teacher was like, what are you doing? You have taken so many pencils. What's going on? And I was like, I don't want pencils, man. 
Which is like kind of messed up because she shouldn't be asking me like, oh, I got so many pencils. Like, it, it's, it's my business, my pencils. I didn't like that. That made me upset. That was one of my least favorite teachers, actually. What is that emote? I don't know what that emote is. But... All right, Mr. Natsume's lobby. He has a cannon? What? The this place looks... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Not doing that voice. Oh, yes. Um, would this be the residence of Mr. John Gerideb? Indeed it would, son. Who may I say is calling? My name is Ryunosuke Naruhoto. I, uh... Mr. Naruhoto is representing Mr. Soseki's, uh, Soseki Natsume. I believe he takes his lodgings here. We would very much like to ask him some questions about our client. Here! One moment, please. I shall convey the message to Mr. Gerideb. Did you see that, Mr. Sato? That was a real-life English maid! I know, I, as I understand it, anyone of standing in English society employs a number of household staff. But that was the first one I've seen in the the first one I've seen in the flesh. Oh, this day keeps getting better. It certainly feels like we've been really we've really arrived now, doesn't it? We need only to meet a butler, and the experience will be complete. Well, I'm not sure if I'd go that far, but no, I understand the sentiment. Thank you for waiting, Mr. Garrett. I will see you now. This way. Mm, this guy, he looks like a shark. <laughs> okay. More fourth grade ranting, I'm ready. Let's look around his room first. He has a cannon. It's a full-size cannon! What's it doing in here? How did it get in here? Oh my, it's real! I thought it might be a replica. That old thing, but a little more than a toy. Sorry. The army was willing to sell it off when I retired, so I decided to give it a new home. Never know when the enemy might attack next. Jolly useful to- Is he- He's- Oh, that's disgusting. Using his pipe as a stir stick? A cannon in the house. Really? It is an overkill? Be prepared, I always say. You never know what this twisted world is going to throw at you next, boy. Do you think there are any- uh, There may be any trouble brewing- Uh, any trouble brewing, Mr. Giverdep? Always is. Take Johnny. I never fail to have a clean apron in reserve. Drives them over the barrel, you see. They dry very well in the cannon there, Joan tells me, which rather proves my point, I feel. It's been reduced to a drying rack. No wonder the huge cannon looks like it's hanging its head in shame. Mr. Garadam. I notice you have a pile of books here, Mr. Garadam. Do you enjoy reading? After an experience at London Winter Boy, the night's along. No better way to pass the time than in front of the fire with a jolly good book. Oh, there's a copy of Rant's magazine here, I see. No doubt Mr. Garajab enjoys the investor of Herlock Sholmes, too. The Great Detective has a great many followers, it would seem. Yeah. Uh, he is an interesting individual. He's a rich man, looks like. Well, he has a maid, so of course he's rich. At the end of the, the year, you turn the project thing the class is working on. Uh, so earlier in the day, Ms. T said everyone in the class turned in. They hadn't turned it in yet. And when you did turn it in later in the day, said to you, thank you, don't respond to anything I say. Wait, what? Earlier in the day, Ms. T said everyone in the class had turned it in. You hadn't turned it in. When you did turn it in later the day, she said, thank you, don't respond to anything I say. What? Oh, you don't respond to anything I say. Uh, you were nine, so that comment crushed you? It sounded like this was the, like a worst teacher you've... Like, a, this is a, a pretty bad teacher, man. I haven't had many bad teachers, so I'm lucky, but man, they exist and they suck. That uniform looks fairly ancient, doesn't it? No, what do you mean? It looks awesome! It's clearly been uh, well looked after, though. That old thing? Ha, <laughs> not much better than rags, really. Oh, more the ceremonial garb that retirement bash, you know. But I'm not one for dwelling on the past. Me. I uh, would have gladly thrown it out, but you know how it is. Anyway, it doesn't hurt to have the odd piece of mem memorabilia laying around, does it? Oh, I see. Perhaps we should leave the past in the past. Okay, uh, let's keep looking around. There's a cool medal here. It looks like a Medal of Honor, and it's showcased in a very grand banner. Yes, it's displayed with some pride, I would say. Although it bothers me that it's not straight. What? That old thing? I'm sorry? I should be glad to see the back, the back of it, but the general would turn his grave if I disposed of it. The wall's the best place for it. Keeps the belly thing out of the way. So it's just been polished to shine by accident, I suppose? <laughs> there appears to be an inspection in the metal itself. Look, 
Let me see. It says for distinguished participation. Second worst teacher you ever had. Worst teacher you've had was the third grade math teacher you come to see. And it sounds like the kind of honors I this is not my voice. It sounds like the kind of honors that I have been allowed for. Well, one doesn't like to blow one's trumpet, but I was given that all my time in the army. Can't be measured uh, can't measure an officer by the number of medals to his name, of course. Common knowledge in military circles. Dog! Dog statue! Oh wait, oh uh, yeah, him. The portrait of Mr. Garadeb is glaring at me, I swear. That's it? Oh no. Have you noticed that all the little frames contain photographic prints of Mr. Garadeb as well? Yes, and there seems to be a statue of a lion in the mantelpiece as well. Oh, that's a, that, yeah, it's a cat, not a dog. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, seem to come back in the local pawnbroker with a little trinket. Seem to come back? What do you mean? The cheap who, the, the cheap, the chap who runs this place is, bally, is a bally wizard. Went in to sell him something and came out with that thing. And point of fact, now that I think about it, I'd rather often find myself leaving the place with something I don't need. The lion ornament certainly does seem so blessed to be violence. The other son doesn't pull her punches, or her throws for that matter. Uh, okay, let's see. This is a big house. Oh, wait, no, it's not, it's not really. What is that on the ground? Oh, it's a candle. Okay. Look at that enormous screen must have been put there deliberately. Surely. Wait, why are there... Why are the windows open there? But there were there were bricks there. That's weird. Huh. Yes, it certainly seems like someone's trying to hide something from view. What could be behind it, I wonder? Bricks? I'm going to have a very quick look, just a little peek. No, wait, no, it's not. Never mind. Wouldn't be. Oh, hi, my am. Uh, maybe that's not business at all. Alright, you are suspe suspect number one. Here you are. You and the maid. You're one and two. I think the maid is going to uh, heat us off with a cup of tea. Oh, <laughs> man! Uh, and lots of stuff. Oh, 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 There's broken stuff on the wall. Oh, look! What a wonderful collection of cakes lined up on that gleaming silver cake stand. Lined up? It looks more like someone has half demolished them than me. Afternoon tea is a time of indulgence, you know. It's quite the English way. It is Mr. Gary Depp's custom to take two cakes, cakes with his tea. That sounds delightful. Oh, uh, wait a minute, though. There are at least ten cakes in this cake stand. Well, naturally, and it would never do a waste of the leftovers. So whatever Miss Garrett up doesn't eat, I say to myself, Joan, you should, ha you shall have to tidy up. How um, uh, magnanimous of you. Yes. Lots of broken stuff, and I think that's everything. Uh, look at this uh, crockery on display here. It's rather unusual, isn't it? Oh my, gentle London dresser, isn't it delightful? No. Although the shelves seem to be broken, and the, uh, the crockery is... Oh dear, it's in pieces. If I have time, I should play Genshin Impact. It's great, especially the uh, Inazama chapter. I don't know, I might, I might not. I have no idea. I haven't decided yet. It really is. The world cracked wouldn't do that China word justice. Ah, I wonder. Perhaps the cannon was fired at it. Yeah, probably something like that. But let's not delve too deeply here. Interesting. He's glancing at me. This window looks uh, looks over Briar Road, where the young woman was attacked. Oh yeah, I can make out the police uh, the policeman on the far side of the road investigating the crime scene. The glass is rather murky, isn't it? Uh, you can't see clearly. Uh, this uh, does this thing open at all? I wonder. I shouldn't underestimate the bitterness of a London winter, sir. Sorry. As soon as you open that window, the tea will freeze in the pot. No Londoner would go opening windows at dusk in the middle of winter, I assure you. It seems very unlikely that these two would have been would have seen anything in the incident, though. Uh, great exploring game. Beginning is a bit boring, but it's fun to explore the areas with other people. I might. I, I don't know if I will play it. Like I said, I haven't decided. Uh, I do want to play some other games, though, first. Very unlikely that I would have been seen anything in the incident. Just All right, let's talk to you. Wait, we can't? Or do I need to move over? Wait, no, hang on. Wait, no. What's happening? Why is my... What? Well, everything is acting kind of weird. Okay, so look at them. I can't talk to them? Oh no, do I have to examine them? I might. Miss C yelled at you in front of the entire class in grade 3 because you did some math homework earlier than she wanted me to? That's so stupid. That makes me mad. <laughs> 
A good day to you, John Garadab, at your service. Pleased to meet you, sir. This is Rianosuke Naruto. He's a defense lawyer. Do accuse me not getting up. I took a shot to the knee if you... <laughs> I took an arrow to the knee. I took a shot to the knee if you was back in the Battle of Ma uh, Maywan, you, you know. I earned a medal for my pains, but had to withdraw from service, handed over the reins to the up-and-comings. Uh, so he's a retired soldier. That makes that makes sense. It's a hell of a job getting up and down the stairs now, I can tell you. Don't get out much, as you can imagine. Yeah, it's quite a climb up there to the second floor, isn't it? I was, uh, I was panning at the top of the stairs. Oh, so this is up. Okay. You must really take more exercise, Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, do you think so? Well, Mr. Garadab, uh, no doubt you are very courageous to earn yourself a medal. Uh, which was nothing. The medal's just a f uh, f uh, f f f fold folder, really. Wouldn't like to offend the general, though. I so grudgingly displayed it on the wall. Why don't you fetch it down, Gerald? Let these good people see it properly. Whoa! What the- Dash it, woman! Be careful! Oh dear me, I do beg your pardon, sir! I looked away for two seconds and, like, stuff went crazy. Mm, you jolly nearly took the skin off my hands! I shall be more careful, sir! So anyway, there you have it. Living in the quiet- living a quiet life now. Yes, I see. Now then, I hear you. Uh, you want to know whether the chap lodging downstairs is that right? Yes, we would be very grateful if you could answer some questions for us. Um. Wait, so the principal got mad at you too? That sucks. Man, that's like a villain arc. That's like the villain origin. That's that's terrible. Wait, if I send out some Genshin music, would I listen to it? Probably not. <laughs> I'm busy listening to the Persona 5 soundtrack. Oh, baby. That's good. I've got to wake up, get up, get up there. Okay. I've got to focus. Okay, all right, all right. that's enough chat for now. I've got to focus on the game because we got to get this done. we got to finish it off. Only two, please, naturally. Especially if it helps you keep the peace here in Blighty. We forged an alliance with the Empire of Japan recently, as I'm sure you're aware. So this case is very much in the public eye, as it were. Oh, is it? Even had some famous detective poking around, you know. This old house, would you believe? Persona 5 music's okay, but not the best. You're very close to a ban right now. Yes, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I mean, Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Smith, Smith, Smith. Could have been, didn't catch the chap's name. Not really my cup of tea, all the detective business. Oh, but you have a copy of Rance Magazine here, so... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyway, the chops and in the foreigner's room as we speak. That's kind of suspicious. So he's in Saseki-san's uh, room. Very close to the very close to a man because you said the truth. Shut your mouth. I'm not reading the chat anymore. You just lost your chat privileges. I'm never reading the chat again today. Out of the tab. I'm not listening to it. No, no, no more chat. You broke it. We broke it. Mouth. I'm not reading the chat anymore. It's a ballet nuisance is what it is. The whole neighborhood's twitching to its curtains now. Oh, darn it. I gotta click the... Th okay, there we go. I don't like all this fuss. It's jolly up and settling. About Mr. Natsume. About Mr. S Natsume, then, Mr. Goethe. Please do tell us. Ah, yes. The Japanese chap. Only been allotting here for a week. Oh, just one week? So he moved in very recently, then. I have two lodges most of the time, one on the ground floor and, gen the, and the one just below us. The first floor's room became available a week ago, you see. There's been... <laughs> Dash it all, Joan, do be careful. Oh, my goodness, I'm terribly sorry, sir. If you want to know my opinion, I thought he was a shady sort from the moment I set eyes on him. Why? Racist? Why? Because he's a Jap! <laughs> you racist. He, he said... He seemed to have the most nervous disposition, always shaking and looking at- Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, fine. If you say anything about him being Japanese, I'm gonna slap you! The man had shady written across his sweat-soaked brow, if you ask me. I said to myself, Joan, that man is troubled sooner or later. He's going to do something out untoward. But I'm rarely wrong about anything. We won't be calling this maid as a witness, that's for sure. Was there anything else that struck you as suspicious about the man at all? Don't you dare say it. Yes, oh, yes, indeed, there was! And she's dying to tell us. 
The shady... Tell me. Tell me, would you? Had you noticed anything else at all about your lodger, Mr. Natsume? Oh, what? Yes. The man was shadier than an orchid. Could you elaborate? Well, take the man's room. Absolutely stuffed full of books. It is more than anyone could ever read. And he never so much passes the time of day with another living soul. I haven't seen a single visitor, single visitor call. He just trots off to that old bookshop every day and comes back five, at five to light the gas fire. And the funny little man is up long past the time everyone else in the house has gone to bed too. Oh, I see. The gentleman on the ground floor goes to bed at around nine each night. But I've never known that Japanese fellow to retire any earlier than two in the morning. Ah. Japanese fellow. Okay. Would you clarify something, I wonder? What, pray? I do need to focus on the game, though. How do you know so much about Mr. Natsume's routine? Oh! I don't understand that neither of the lodges live on this floor in the house. I'm sorry, that was uncalled for. Is that correct? That's right, yes, they're both below us, on the first floor, street level. Then, how is it that you know so much about the lives of your lodgers? The, the precise times that they come back in the evening, for example, even the times they go to bed. Good grief, Joan, be careful, woman. My goodness, sir, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Uh, something doesn't add up here. Gonna play Genshin again, all right, man. Have a good night. Have a good, have a great evening. An right, incident two days ago. Seems that the incident took place at around five in the evening. Did you happen to look out of the window at around that time? Oh, the window. Yes, we noticed that at the wind at the window over there looks at over over at Brown Road. Um, the incident took place in the pavement just at the far side of the street. Is there anyone suspicious loitering nearby? Five o'clock is dinner time in a Garadab household, so I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anything. How about you, Joan? No, sir, it would have been dusk outside already at that hour. As with the fog as well, I should think I should have been quite impossible to see the other side of the road. Oh, I see. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary, then? Such as? Anything at all, even if it seems unrelated. Oh, well. Yes, was there something then? Something particularly significant, but around that sort of time in here. Oy! For the love of God, Joan, watch what you're doing! Don't look if I'm done, I'm awfully sorry, sir! Do be more careful, woman. Of course, sir. I may, Mr. Mr. Naru Hollow. Oh, uh, yeah? I have an exceedingly good memory, as far as I remember. Nothing of any significance took place here at that hour. Nothing at all. Oh, really? Mr. Garadan? The way you were talking before, it sounded rather like there might have been... Oh, well, as I was saying, it was just a trifling matter, really. Nothing of... Yay! Oh, dash it all! What is the matter with you, woman? Begging your pardon, sir? She's suspicious. She's, she's making him not talk. Nothing happened. Oh, yes, quite. Nothing happened. We sat down to a quiet, uneventful meal. Hmm? Joan? That's right, Mr. Gary Depp. What's the matter with these two? It sounded like something happened there in this room in the evening of the incident. But what? I wish I knew. Mr. Natsume's room. Could you tell us which floor Mr. Natsume's room is on? Why, certainly. Just below us on the first floor. Mr. Shum is investigating there even as we speak. Yes. Told me Nat's his name, asked him to look into the matter, so we gave him the key. Mr. Natsume has engaged in Mr. Shum's services? That's a blatant lie. Would it be alright if we also had a look around? In Mr. Natsume's room, I mean. Uh, I don't see why not. It's just down one flight of stairs. Who knows if we'll find anything out that can help us with the case, but we have to try. We need all the clues we can lay our hands on, shall we? Yes, and while we're here, while we're there, let's speak to the Shomes again. Perhaps they'll be able to tell us more. Indeed. Alright, I guess uh, we gotta go down there. But I think I will end the stream right here because I'm a little hungry. And it's almost 7 o'clock. I didn't eat yet. And it's been a while since I ate, so I need to do that. 
But um, I will stream this. Oh, actually, there's one one thing here. We'll read this thing and then I'll end it. And then for the YouTube video, we'll be right back here, so it'll be like nothing ever happened. Are are those mortar shells? They're enormous. Ah, oh, I hadn't noticed. What are they doing here? Ah, those old things. A couple of little rounds I accidentally fired into the barracks during training, you know. Here we get a colorful regiment uh, fall out that incident. You mean you deliberately hunted out sp uh, spent shells? These spent shells? Well, I wouldn't say deliberately exactly. They're only scrap iron after all. Usually just thrown away, I believe. You should never know what those things might come in use for, do you? Useful for what exactly? Uh, yes, well. Joan here did manage to knock out one of the bodily things on my foot the other day once he was dusting. Oh no! Hadn't shed a tear since 1896 before then, you know. Maybe reconsider throwing him away? Yeah, I probably would. And yeah, that's it, okay. So, next time, we are gonna go to Mr. Natsume's room. And we're gonna check it out. So yeah, for the YouTube video, See you in two seconds. Here's a cool transition. And we're back. Okay, so um, we've got these guys. I want to look at the court record. Uh, for the YouTube video, as you know, I don't really know what's going on because I'm just starting up the stream right now, the next stream. Uh, so we've got all these guys, Saseki Natsume, uh, Iris Wilson, the maid, we don't know who the maid is, and John Garadeb. And John was... Oh, he's a suspect, I guess we'd call him that. Because we don't really know what is going on with him. We do know that he is housing the supposed, um... Assaulty? Assaulty? <laughs> assaulty boy? I don't know. Um, but yeah. So, we are gonna go to Mr. Natsume's room. Apparently it's pretty messy, so... See how it looks. And it is very messy. Oh, <gasps> 19th of February, Mr. Natsume's room. What? Just look at this place. And smell it. It's so musty in here. I suppose it's the mountain of books that are responsible for that. He does read a lot. <laughs> Sasato is very concerned. I don't think I've ever seen so many books in all my life. No, me neither. It's so dark in here, too. That's because the wall is, is all messed up. Is that the window over there? Well, it was the window, I think, yes. Once upon a time. But for some reason, it's been closed up with bricks and mortar. So this is where Mr. Natsume lives. By the way... I haven't spotted Mr. Sholmes anywhere, have you? Oh yeah, he's supposed to be in here. Is he the cat? No, that's true. But according to what Mr. Garadeb told us, the great detective should be around here somewhere investigating. Okay... So there's a cat. Uh, that is the one thing I can see that I'm pretty sure we need to check, and I'm going to check. And then... Oh. Little cat. I hope the cat goes on trial. <laughs> I mean, not <laughs> for like a murder, I just hope I see the cat again. Oh my, what an adorable little cat! Perhaps he's looking after all the books while his master's away. I don't know about that. He disappeared in the pile of books as quick as a flash. It was a tricolor Mike, wasn't it? Do they even have that sort of cat here in Great Britain? Perhaps Mr. Natsume uh, brought along the little creature from him with Japan. <laughs> I said that wrong. That makes me feel homesick now. Already? We've only been in the country for two days. Yeah. Ah, man. Homesickness. I've never been truly homesick. And I hope I never am, because I like my home. <laughs> That desk seems to be weighed into a crevice between the mountains of books on either side. I suppose Mr. Natsume would sit there and read while stroking his cat, but surrounded by all sides of these towering old tomes, surely he dreamt of books every night as well. Yes, he must have done, mustn't he? Oh, what's this? It's a receipt for a second-hand bookshop. Your books. Oh yes, your books. It's your books and it's my books. Oh yeah, Mr. Natsume's name is on, the, is on it, look. And the date of purchase, oh, two days ago at 4.55 p.m. That's the day of the incident. All right. That's just a short while before we, uh, he was in Broadland in the terrible attack. He must have been on his way back from buying some old books. Okay, so this can, this will help us get his name 
this this is like the piece of evidence that'll get the jury to like be like, oh, okay, well, he wasn't there, was he? But then, but then, Mr. Reaper is gonna be like, oh, but look, oh, look, how's it going, man? Oh, look, Mr. Naruto! I missed him. Ah, there he is. Where did he appear from? He seems to be engrossed in the pages of an old book. I hope he wasn't. I hope he won't mind if we disturb him. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, you too. Good day. Now let me see. Where was that? What? Where was it that we met? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, we were together on the SS Burya. Oh, yes, of course, the Burya. And let me see. What happened on that voyage? It was Kazuma Sogi. He died tragically, but you were a great help to us. Ah, yes, but of course, the case of Mr. Sogi. It was the one with the snake, wasn't it? Oh! Well, you seem to remember something of it, at least. What an honor to be remembered vaguely by the great Herlock Sholmes. This is Mr. No, oh, no, 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 my dear maiden, hold your tongue. I pride myself on the superior powers of recollection. Your names are safely recorded in my brain attic. Miss Naruto. No. And Mr. Sasato. Try the other way around, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> I lose the first round. I love him. He's my favorite. But I still think he's related to Gumshoe. <laughs> That'd be really funny if he was. In truth, I'd hoped to invite you to my Baker Street suite the day we arrived in London. But some Scotland Yarders ambushed me at the railway station and whisked me away to a crime scene. I was an entire... It was an entirely trivial case, of course. I solved the matter in no more than 30 minutes. So they apprehended Sasaki-san that short and in, in that short an amount of time? I'm afraid the pursuance of a new case has dulled my recollection of my past involvement a little. A little? Is it a mistake to think that the brain's attic has elastic walls and can distend to any extent? I do my best to forget useless facts, let they sh uh, lest they should elbow out the useful ones. Yes, those are my own words of in in inimitable wisdom, you know, from an inventor entitled A Study in Scarlet. Please, there's no need to quote yourself. I don't always remember my pearls of wisdom, but, un but fortunately, my associate pens them beautifully. He must mean Iris, I suppose. Mr. Sholmes, we have some extremely important questions to ask you about the trivial case you just mentioned. Goodness, what an earnest expression. My dear madam, I should be only too pleased, and this murky room is an apt place to discuss the murky case. Okay. I do want to look around the room a little bit, though, because there might be some clues. Oh, my controller's acting a little weird, I don't know why. Could you even call this a window? Hey, Moose, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you had a good day. And, yeah. I should have said, hope you had a good day and continue to have. You're currently playing piano. I'm very bad at playing piano, but I used to play piano, and I was okay. Now I'm not. <laughs> um, I think so. It was a window at one time, after all. Although, that remain all that remains is a frame around some bricks now. So really, it's just a wall then, isn't it? But why would anyone deliberately brick it up like that? I'm afraid I have no idea. Oh, perhaps Mr. Natsume painted the brick design on a fit of whimsy. Uh, that's alarmingly feasible. Anyways, whatever the reason, the lack of ventilation here makes this place very oppressive. Just like the gamers, the most oppressive group of all. Oppressive? No, oppressed. I'm kidding. It does! I imagine being cooped up in a room like this would be extremely tiring. Or trying. I don't know what that said, but... Uh, yeah, so he's got a lot of books. Look at all these books stepped up there. It's, they almost reached the ceiling. They're all works of English literature, and they all smell so musty. With this volume of books to hand, you'd never be short of reading material, would you? No, what a dreamy idea. A bad dream, maybe, for me at least. Mind you, I don't imagine the books that... I don't imagine the book that's at the bottom of the pile now will ever be read again. Yeah. Ah, so reading is an experience that comes once in a lifetime, just as the tea ceremony teaches us. I certainly didn't expect the conversation to turn down a path of tea ceremony philosophy. Oh, philosophy. I've, I'm, I'm taking a philosophy class. I'm learning about... Well, I'm doing a project where I need to uh, read about a, a philosopher. I'm doing it on Solon Kierkegaard. Or Soren Kierkegaard, not Solon. Uh, you're learning Beethoven Sonata, and it's really cool. I like that one song in Mother 3. 
that where they they're just like all right let's just put in a classical song and they did and that's my favorite classical piece ever because it's in mother three but it's a really good uh, it's called like jiminopadai number one or is it jiminopadai number three it's one of those it's really good it goes like boom 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 it's, it's really peaceful uh it makes your head hurt a lot yeah i mean doing something for a long time really does it can take a toll on your mental health i think like, I've been looking at a, a monitor all day today, and I'm doing it again now, but this is for fun, so it's good. Oh, look! A, a, it's beckoning a cat from home! It's it's a bit big and bulky, isn't it? I'm sure Mr. Natsume didn't bring that, um... Maniki... Manikai? Maniki Nico all the way from Japan with him. I hardly think you're in a position to com comment, Mr. Naruto. Are you forgetting the enormous D Daruma doll you have bought in your luggage? Well, it can be dangerous traveling abroad. I wanted a Lucky Charm. Oh, Lucky Charm cereal! Yeah. I was about to say, what's on the end of yours? But that's not right. Well, I imagine Mr. Natsumi wanted the same, and this cat is sure to beckon good luck to him. It's not doing a very good job so far, is it? You mustn't say such things. Whoops. Not bad. I didn't say a word! Why are my eyes such a giveaway? Okay, it looks like... Oh, it doesn't like this much. So not the 17 movement 3 is what I'm learning. You should listen to it. It's a really cool piece. I may. You, I have to remember it for me, though. Or, uh, remember it. And, uh, r remind me about it. Because I will not remember that. My brain only holds so much. I'm like Mr. Shoms. Okay, it looks like there's some garbage here. Might be some stuff we can look at. Look at these balls of paper on the floor. There's no scrawled all over them in English. It looks like the waste paper basket is so full, they've just fallen out. I think Mr. Natsume must have been deeply immersed in his research, don't you? Or deeply averse to tidying up his mess. <laughs> I wouldn't like to speculate, but he's closer to the truth. He's probably, like, learning his English, which is, is a good thing. Alright, Shomes. Tell me about Mr. Natsume's arrest. We know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Soseki Natsume. It seems that you assisted in his arrest, Mr. Sholmes, for the stabbing of a young woman outside here on Briar Road. Hmm, Natsume. Yes, I believe it was the name rather along those lines. But Mr. Natsume designed and eyes it. Uh, was it really justifiable to arrest him on so little? Well, if he was the only person found, then... I'm sorry, Mrs. Hutto, but I have not the slightest idea what you mean. What? I can't believe he was looking at Sasato san squarely in the eye while f uh, f uh, <laughs> feigning ignorance. I assure you, I am not merely feigning ignorance. It would appear that the pair of you are under some misapprehension. Oh, how? I assure you, I have no recollection of accusing you, of accusing your stooped compatriot of the crime. But that doesn't make sense. The good detective of Scotland Yard made the following request of me, and I quote verbatim. We need you to ascertain the identity of and whereabouts of a man seen fleeing the crime scene. Ah, a man seen fleeing. There were a number of books scattered on the pavement at the scene. From the book plates, I was quickly able to determine the bookshop from which they had been purchased. On speaking with the perpetrator, I was immediately led, er, pr uh, proprietor, I was immediately led to this address. Elementary, wouldn't you say? I believe there is a receipt around here from, from somewhere from the establishment in question. So you don't think Mr. Natsume is the culprit, then? Hmm, that I could not tell you, but it was aggravating my faculties, hence why I returned here. However, this place is such a trove of fascinating books, I found myself quite lost in book. Do not be deceived into believing that I am a man of leisure. No, no, no. Oh, dear. Okay, what about uh, Mr. Garrett Depp? What do you think of this guy? I don't think I trust him that much. So, tell me. Have you encountered the landlord of these lodgings? Yes, Mr. Garrett Depp, a retired military man. It was the first time I've ever met a soldier from the great British institution that is the services. And it was the first time I've ever met a maid from the great British institution that is service. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. I do apologize. As you may well be aware, many households in London employ a maid. Yes, I read as much as in I read as much as my Great Britain primer. And so, conversely, 
Whether or not a household employs a maid has come to be betoken the social standing that of the dwellings therein. Betoken the social standing, sorry. Uh, you have to go cook pizza, but you see the stream running on your phone, so I have plus one viewer. <sighs> man, the truth sucks, doesn't it? I hate the truth, man. <laughs> Would you rather live in a... In a... In like a false... In a, in a false paradise? Or, or do you want to live in... In a... In a depressing reality? Man. Persona... Five... Royal. God game. The token that's social standing, sorry. Put simply, my dear fellow, those who employ at least a single maid are considered middle class, those who do not are beneath that. In the upper echelons of society, of course, households employ enough staff to constitute a large family. Goodness, how extraordinary. As you can appreciate for those on the pre precarious boundary between the middle and the lower classes, being able to afford just one maid is one of the first importance. I had no idea. And it is for precisely that reason that I find great simulation in the situation upstairs. Specifically, in the retired army veteran, Mr. John Geradeb. Oh? Affordable, or er, affable as he is, the fellow is hiding something. Whether or not it, is, it imposes on the circumstances of this case, I am, yet to, I am yet unable to ascertain. I'm thoroughly lost in what he means to say. Uh, the dinghy room? I don't know what the dinghy room is. The r this room is thoroughly suffocating the soul for my dear fellow. I assure you, any man who's, whose lot is to dwell in a place such as this will stab somebody sooner or later. <laughs> Mr. Natsumi has not stabbed anyone! Ah, but sooner or later, as I said. I don't believe that's the issue here. How about this dark little room, Mr. Sholmes? Uh oh. Stream just died for a second. <laughs> That's a good, good sign. Uh, why is there no longer a window? Do you have any idea? No window? Well, I mean, I can clearly see that there's a window of sorts. But it's been completely blocked with bricks. Ah, oh, I see. The answer to that question is quite simple Window tax. Window tax? What is that? Surely, not a tax on windows. Precisely that. Oh my goodness! Until relatively recently, a tax was uh, uh, levied on households in this country by the number of their windows. Those of lesser means, have, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps rapidly closed windows up. While the rich open windows here, and there, and everywhere. In an effort to curry favor with those in power by furnishing them with a large with large sums of tax money. How awful and unjust, forcing people to live in rooms devoid of light. Indeed, disease was a was rifle as a result. So some forty years ago or thereabouts, the window tax was abolished. But its legacy remains, as you can see, in squal uh, squalid lodgings such as these, for example. I suppose Mr. Natsume's stipend, stip, stipend for living here in London isn't very generous, perhaps. It would appear so. I've done a little digging and discovered that these lodgings were offered at that of an extraordinary low, extraordinarily low price. I can see why. Because the room is so awful, I should think. Yeah. Apparently, Mr. Natsume only moved here in about, or uh, about one week ago. Yes, that's correct. However, I do not believe the low rent is explained by the shabby nature of this accommodation. Oh? Still, that is of little relevance here. A matter not worthy of further attention. Are you sure? I'm curious now. Hmm. Well, I believe I've told you all I can now. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, yes, Mr. Narahodo. Was it not your intention to become a practitioner of the law? <laughs> you remember that, did you? Will you perhaps be offering your services in this very matter, I wonder? To the occupant of this room, Mr... Natsume, was it? I'm not sure. Not sure? On what grounds? Well, I actually defended someone in court here only yesterday. Really? Well, then I congratulate you, sir, on an ambition... Uh, on an ambition realized, and so promptly, too. 
The thing is, it's really made me question things. Am I right to believe in my clients? Remind me in eight minutes to take the pizza out of the oven. All right, I'll remind you. To trust their innocence? Hmm, yes, trust. Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Nozume didn't do it, did he? <laughs> My dear fellow, I haven't the first idea. Oh, but I thought that's why you were here. Didn't you come back to investigate? Ah, oh, yes, that was indeed my initial invention. Intention, not invention. But there are simply too many fascinating books here, I couldn't possibly ignore them. Oh, I see. Nevertheless, there are two facts that I can state quite unequivocally. The man who fled the scene of the crime two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room, and there are witnesses who swear to have seen the same man commit the crime. That is all I can say. Ah, oh, and one more thing. Oh, what is it, Mr. Sholmes? Tell us! I cannot say with the certainty whether or not it is of relevance to this case, but I am quite sure that the retired army man who owns this property is hiding something. Mr. Garadeb is? Mr. Sholmes said as much before, actually, didn't he? Anyway, at present, that is really all that plays on my mind in relation to this case. Miss Narahodo. As yet, our investigations have uncovered nothing that helps us establish Mr. Natsume's innocence. No, you're right. Perhaps it's time we probed a little deeper into Mr. Garadeb's secret. Just remember, I cannot be sure whether the landlord's secret will prove to be of relevance or not. But I wish you every success, of course, Mr. Naruhodo. Thanks, Jones. Hmm, a busy man indeed. He's gone back to his book in the corner of the room. Yeah, I guess that's everything here. I don't... I, I think we got everything. So we gotta find his secret. Oh, no, that's new. We didn't see this. This appears to be some sort of meter on the wall here. Looks very robust. I wonder what it's for. There's a slot for inserting coins here, too. It's like a lock on it. Oh, I believe that's a gas meter, Mr. Naruto. A gas meter? Yes, it seems there is a piped gas in this district, which consumers pay for by putting coins in the meter. So, if we were to put a coin in the slot, that would be enough gas to use the lights and the gas fire for the whole night. So, if you're too poor to have a coin, you'd have to spend the night in the dark and freezing cold. That's right. That's what a rich man who only carried crisp white notes. <sighs> London's a scary place. Yeah, but it's awesome here. It's very, it's a cool place. I think that's everything. And yeah, there he is. He's just chilling. Let's go tap him. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes. Hmm, yes, so true. To be or not to be? Shakespeare? <laughs> that is indeed the question, Mr. Narodo. To be or not to be brushed off? That is the question, and the answer is all too clear. Let's leave Mr. Sholmes in peace, shall we? Yep, let's do it. Um, alright. Mr. Garrett. Or maybe we should go back to the... We've got a lot of places to go, actually. I don't think there's anything in the Lord Chief Justice's office. Um, we have the crime scene. I do want to visit him. Might be able to get something new. Looks like we will. Local prison. Cell 9. Seems that we can't meet with Mr. Natsume at the moment. Oh. He's being briefed about his appearance in court tomorrow, apparently. I see. Yeah, the trial is only a day away. Alright then, let's come back later. Yes? I really hope he's not answering any more questions with inappropriate textbook answers like, Yes, I do. Alright, nothing here. Hmm. How boring. Alright, I guess we'll go to Gary Deb's room. We gotta figure out what he wants. Or no, what he's keeping from us. But we, we may need more... We may need to look around for more evidence to present to him. I don't believe we have anything. Let's see. We have a second-hand book receipt. I guess we could try giving that to him. Um, the sum of two shillings tempered receipt of... Or tendered in receipt of the picture of Monsieur Lecoq, <laughs> Emile for Gabriel, and Canterbury Yearnings. Alright. Oh, I forget the voice I gave him. Oh, you bear again. Tell me, was the detective chap, I forget his name, still hard at work down there? Mr. Herlock Sholmes? 
Hmm, yeah, this rings a vague bell. All that detective business isn't really my thing, I'm afraid. Well, Mr. Sholmes is in his element down there. Jolly good show. Another cup of tea, if you please, Joan. Now then, why don't you tell me what- <laughs> For the upteam time, woman, will you watch with your bally with, with your bad babble now that doing? I shall be serving dinner shortly, sir! Ah, mm, yes, of course. <laughs> Swell, Seymour, I've made it. Trifly rude of me, but I'm afraid I shall ask you to take your leave, if you'd be so kind. Oh, yes, of course. We are deeply grateful for all your assistance. Not at all, not at all. Don't get much chance to talk with the young foreigners like yourselves. It's been a pleasure. I just hit my controller off the bottom of my desk. That's bad. I don't want to do that again. Best of luck and all that. Perhaps you could see yourselves out. Why, though? What are you hiding? What are you hiding in that pipe? According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Garadev is hiding something. And since no other avenues of investigation seem open to us at the moment, perhaps we should do some digging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What are you doing over there? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh, what's he doing over there? Mr. Sholmes? Aha, we meet again, my dear fellows. Good gracious, when did you sneak in here? Erlock Sholmes, sir, at your service. Whatever you're doing by the window? I'm given to watching the evening sky as the sun sets, madam. It's sadly, cheerful as the room downstairs undoubtedly is, it lacks the aperture for such observation. So I took the liberty of borrowing a small corner of space by the window up here. Hmm, well. Keeping an eye on, on a, keeping an eye to one's windows at dusk is the prudent thing to do in London, I'm gathering. There's something over there. There's something over there, because he's very worried. Ah, oh, one other thing, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, me? I thought perhaps you may be in need. Have a certain great detective's uh, great mind. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Wait, he's not talking about. Is he? I, I didn't expect to be going through that again so soon. Come on, great deductions. I'm ready. What do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? There's a mighty secret in this modest room. My eyes see even the most trivial of trifles. Trifling of trifles, is what he said. I take it you're prepared, Mr. Narahodo. I think so. There is just time enough. For one of my greatly admired great deductions. Let us conclude the matter before dark. I love these. Iris is a lot better than you are, but... And I love him when he does it. Oh yeah, also, Moose, I think it's been about eight minutes. You've got to go get your pizza. Or you've got to check on your pizza. I think every time I check the oven, whenever I have something in there... I always put it in for, a, like, another minute, because it's never done. Mr. Garadeb! Though it would seem you are a military man of considerably distinguished service, your standing as a landlord is most certainly not what one might call first-rate. Mmm! I'm afraid, sir, that it is all too clear to me. There are two conclusions I have been able to draw by careful observation of your living arrangements. I beg your pardon. The first is that even as we speak, you are concealing the presence of a ferocious beast in your care. Eh? And the second is that as a result of the beast's violent rampage, you have lost something very dear to you. <laughs> Mr. Narodo! No man's broken out a cold sweat. And believably, it seems Mr. Shum's conclusions are both spot on. How, how could you possibly? How could I possibly know, you mean to inquire? The answer couldn't be simpler, sir. For in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning, I am the king of beasts. Oh! Oh, wait, that's... Ah! And I, do, I know only too well that wild beasts are not easily tamed. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. The game is afoot. Yes, it is. Favorite part. Here we go. Nature of the beast. Certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see. 
that a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late within these four walls. Thus we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? Oh, it's a cat. Ah, for a man with a military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. I. Your future of glance, Mr. Garadev, leads us directly to the answer. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by that lion statue. <laughs> yes, though an army man, you appear un unimposing at best. A fact that has fueled your admiration for the mighty lion, the king of beasts. <laughs> what is this piffle, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you had a living, breathing specimen shipped from India, which you tried to keep in this very house. What? Uh, yet, a li yet living with such a wild beast proved more difficult than you had imagined. The chilling traces of a wild rampage still very much in evidence. Well... Yet as we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to? Madam... Well, I guess he's kind of right with the lion thing. I mean, it's a feline. So. I pray you do not consider me unchivalrous, but it is a pain. It is it is plain to me with one glance in your direction. It is. Your dress pocket gives us a handsome clue as to the beast's current whereabouts. For protruding it is a handbill advertising a circus show. Oh. Yes, you start to dispose of this terrifying lion, Mr. Garadev. At Batty's Circus, a traveling show currently sojourning at a nearby park. I have observed its tents. You saw the established line, sir, to the circus troupe. <laughs> I most certainly did not. I believe I had made my point. The fearsome beast which ran amok in this room was an Indian lion. At a simple visit to the circus now, we'll reveal the lion prancing a jubil jubilantly through the ring of fire. You got it, dude. A rampaging uh, is, a, is a, a, a lion. Um, aftermath. Yeah, what happened? Now, Mr. Garadeb, it is plainly clear that you have a d you have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed. In that blith pose, the distress this loss has caused you is ve uh, <laughs> veritably tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel being revealed by that supporting arm. Amid fits of tears, you let your beloved beast go. The strain of losing something so dear to you is clearly visible on your visage. Nonsense, man. I, I simply... Uh, but what we must now ask ourselves is the true cause of this pain. It's a scratch. It's a cat scratch. And we need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Paper cut. It's the pile of bills that has given the rise to the pain you suffer. Every envelope contains another demand for your payment. Ah... For craft loads of meat, potatoes, wheat, and tea. Indeed, feeding your beloved beast has had a devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so you had no choice but to let it go. Yes, well, uh... Now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious beast carried out one last unimaginable attack. Unimaginable? The aftermath, then, which can clearly be seen by observing the carpet over there. A very expensive woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Deary me. What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Oh! This time, madam, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently revealed the truth to me. Your wandering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we only need to look at the Tower of Cakes. Ah! Oh. There's no creature more dangerous on this earth than a beast with an unsati un unsatiated appetite. Was it, or was it not, once said by a certain noblewoman, if they have no bread, let them eat cake? Food is as the heart of all tragedy, in fact. Whatever do you mean? Having tried, or having tired of the cake, the beast began to stalk on its next prey. 
I'm sure I need not spell out the nature of this final act of destruction carried out by the beast. There was only one logical conclusion. Worked to a frenzy by hunger, the lion attacked and ate the carpet. The teeth marks in the carpet are a perfect match with those of a lion I once saw in India. Carpet gnawed on, er, carpet gnawed on by the starving lion. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction. This beast of this beastly puzzle. Yep, you got it. Good job, man. Mmm. Ah! <laughs> what is the matter with you, Joan? You're powering, scoring out of water all over me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Caridam. I'm afraid I didn't notice. My deductions can be startlingly sharp. It stands to reason that your cup runneth over. Indeed, my, revela my revelations can make people spill tears at times, too. Oh. Uh, Mr. Sholm, sorry to butt in again, but could I make an observation? Why, certainly, Mr. Naruhoda. What is it, again? Well, your deductions just now... Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Indeed, it is only it is the only explanation for the facts. The terrifying truth all too often lies beyond the realms of common sense. But wouldn't it be an idea to consider what lies inside the realms of common sense as well? But if an uncaged lion had run amok in this very room, surely Mr. Garadab Ger and his maid would have been hurt, or worse. Ah, that's where you are stuck. No doubt the former military man uh, held his own against the beast running in... Whoops. Running in that large cannon. I thought you said that they sold the lion to the circus. Oh, what about the food? Meat and potatoes are the one thing. But I don't believe that I've ever heard of a lion that drinks tea. Ah, my dear Mr. Sutter, what occurs to me some with some regularity. That irrespect that uh, irrespective of race and breeding, whenever anyone lands on Great Britain's soil. They are infused with a highly appropriate taste for afternoon tea. Yeah. Oh, what a glorious notion. Yeah. Well then, Mr. Naruto, it's your turn to shine again. Yeah, it is. I had a feeling that was coming. A slight message, that's all Mr. Shome's deductions need. Massage, sorry, not message. You can do it. Yeah. Excellent. I've been waiting for my trusty partner in deduction to step forward, Mr. Naruto. Don't even know yet whether this is gonna help with Mr. Natsume's case. Still, uncovering the truth is always worthwhile, whatever the motivation. At least that's what I want to believe. Let us start again. From the beginning of Herlock Sholmes, Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Here we go. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. I want to destroy this one. I did it last time, because I'm good at this. Although it's not really difficult, <laughs> but still, it's fun. Uh, shouldn't he read Detective to see? That a fearsome beast has been on the rampage, rampage within these four walls. And thus we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? Yeah. Oh, for a man with a military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. It's a cat, it's not a lion. We saw the cat downstairs. Yeah. The true nature of the beast that has run around here is revealed by that lion statue. I guess kind of. Sort of. I really didn't see the lion thing coming. No, but if you observe Mr. Garadeb's reaction, it rather seems as though some beast did indeed run amok in this room. Yeah, something with a very fierce nature. But it could have been a lion transported from India. So what was it then? We must follow Mr. Garadeb's gaze. That will lead us to the true answer. Um, yeah, he's looking at the... It looks like... Um, what is his photograph? It appears to be from Mr. Gary Depp's wedding. He looks very happy, doesn't he? He does, but you can't make out his bride. No, how unfortunate. Something must have struck the glass directly over the woman's face. I wonder what happened. Probably best not to delve too deeply there. I think, um... Newlywed Bride, Mr. Gerdeb, um... Let's just have a look at it. 
This must have been where Mr. Gary Depp was still in the army. Uh, he's still- ow! He still seems to be carrying a rather stout bride effortlessly and beaming a smile at the same time. I, was, I suppose he was very strong in his younger years. Hard to imagine now. He's as thin as a rake. Yeah, it doesn't seem like... I was assuming there would be like a picture of a cat. Wait a minute! This is very similar to the last one! There was a cat in the last one too. The glass is broken so you can't see the bride's face at all. But no amount of cracks could hide the woman's plump form. I think powerful would be counted in plump, Mr. Naruto. Yeah, she certainly looks that. There's a lot of horsepower there. Not someone you'd want to upset, that's for sure. That's messed up! Oh, wait a minute. There's something there. Oh, look, have you noticed the wedding ring? It's very large, isn't it? Yeah, that's an unusual design. Looks like some sort of, some sort of embellished sunflower. Hmm. Well, I don't think I want to... I'm not going to present that. Er, he is looking at it. I think he would be referring to the actual... Or no, he wouldn't be... I don't think he'd be looking at the mortar shells. I think he would be looking at the picture, right? Because... The true nature of the beast that was remembering is revealed for the lion statue. Um, I don't know, I guess the picture, right? I guess. Take that! I don't know. Okay, I guess I'm right. Photograph frame. Behind the lion statue on the mantelpiece, almost deliberately hidden from view, is a photograph. Though I have yet to examine it in detail, I can assure you that it holds the answer. Because I am employing an extremely advanced detection technique called jumping to conclusions, you see. <laughs> <laughs> That deduction was wanting in every way! Yes, I was waiting for you to hear it, I'm quite proud of it! <laughs> I found myself wanting to never have heard it, I'm quite pained by it, in fact. Oh, sorry, I'll try again. God. Well, what else is he- okay, okay, fine. Well, what we do- we do know some certainly that a, a destructive creature has been at work in this room. And that Mr. Gary Depp was inadvertently, uh, and that Mr. Garadab inadvertently looked in the direction of something that gives its identity away. Yep, if we investigate it thoroughly enough, we ought to find the answer. What does Mr. Garadab turn to look at? So, well, I assume it was the picture, right? Like, there's nothing I can see. Like, I can see the picture, right? Of course there's the lion statue. But, like, there's the picture, too. But I don't know if that says anything. I really don't know. Like the newlywed bride, the nature, the nature of the beast that's run rampant in here is revealed by the newlywed bride. That wouldn't be it, because I think that's the that looks like the maid. I feel like this is the maid, but I don't. Or no, maybe it's not the maid. I don't know, but I don't think it has anything to do with this picture yet. Of course, there's the mortar shells as well. Uh, these are shells for the cannon, aren't they? What a strange place to keep them. I imagine they have some significance in Mr. Gary Depp from his time in the army. Oh, of course. He mentioned a battle to us before, didn't he? Do you remember? He said that he'd been shot in the knee. Perhaps it was one of these that hit him. Or if a round that size hit his knee, there'd be nothing left of it. Or Mr. Gary Depp, for that matter. Mr. Sholmes has a Persian slipper. And this man has spent shells. Perhaps it's customary in Britain to display while well, rubbish on the mantelpiece. I don't know. I mean, is it? There's like nothing else in this room. The only thing in this room... There's three things. Okay, four things, I guess. Technically. There's the statue. Unless there's something under it. If there's something under it, I'm gonna slap my controller. <laughs> This is the one that, uh, statue that Mr. Chumps picked out. Yes, I wonder. Perhaps if he did live with a lion, it would prove to be a rather sweet companion. I think that's like a mouse trying to tell its family that the cat around the house is sweet. I suppose it is a bit of a flight of fancy, isn't it? I knew where the beast we're looking for is something else. Let's have a good look around. I refuse to believe that it is in this picture. I refuse. 
What is this for? I, I don't know. You know what? Okay, you know what? Newly, I guess newlywed right? right? Like, I don't know. I don't think... If it is this, then I can imagine it was the bride. It was the bride. Maybe? I don't know. I'm just gonna... Okay, music stopped. Got it. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by that newlywed bribe. Precisely, Mr. Narmahodo. No other explanation could possibly fit. Unless it was a cat, like the one downstairs. Uh, I guess a cat couldn't do that much damage, but... Yes, this frame print pictures your wife, Mr. Geradeb. And while you lament the fact that her face is obscured, you can still make out her mighty arms and note that, uh, note the considerable horsepower they must contain. What? Well, I'm blind. Oh, um... Indeed, surely any woman of such power constitution would be honored as to be described as a beast. Um, honored might be stretching a point. Too late. The fact remains that the beast, which is so clearly savage that, that has so clearly savaged this room, was your wife, Mr. Gary Depp. Yeah. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. Well. Yet, as we look around here, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to? Madam? Me? I pray you do not consider me unchivalrous, but it is, it is, a, it is plain to me that one... Um... Hmm... 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 Okay, let's see... Let use some. The poor, fragile, defenseless woman is beside herself. Well, I don't know about fragile. Oh dear. Anyway, Mr. Sholmes is quite right. There's no signs of Mr. Gary Depp here, anyways. But it seems there may be a clue as to where, as to her whereabouts. A clue that um, this maid is trying to hide. I wonder where Mr. Gary Depp's wife could be, unless this is her. Um, go all around. <laughs> was he is he in like an abusive relationship with this maid because this maid oh <laughs> this is the wife this is his wife right she slapped him in the face and she keeps pouring boiling tea on his hand because she hates him that's, that's terrible, but we do need to find something that'll that'll help us with this. Cause I can look around this whole place. I can't actually <laughs> look at the the hand mark on his face as of yet. There's, there's the teapot. Uh, what's the question? Dress pot gives us a handsome clue as to the beast's whereabouts. No, well I mean, can I see the pocket at least? I do want to see what's in there. That certainly does appear to be a circus handbill poking out from the pocket. Batty Circus currently performing shows in the park not far from here. You don't think... Surely Mr. Garib didn't sell his wife to the circus. Mr. Narahodo, how could you even think such a thing? I was only joking. Besides, I would have gone with, do you think... I would have gone with, do you think he fed her to his pet lion? That's somehow worse. Yeah, um... Do you have any, like... I would assume the teapot, right? Oh, 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 never mind, never mind, never Take mind, that. never mind. Got it. Yeah, look at that. Your wedding rings is a handsome clue as to the beast's current whereabouts. Oh! Indeed it does. The flowery band gleaming on your finger gives you away. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why she looks so small, though. She was really tiny in that picture. I, 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 don't, I don't know what's up with that. For it is identical to the one shown in the hand of Mr. Garadip's bride in the photographic print. In other words, you are no ordinary household maid. No. You are Mr. Garadip's lucky bride. You are Mrs. Garadip herself. Who 
Doom Boy! What? Yeah, so he's just in, a, in an abusive relationship and he can't get out. He's... Well, jolly fine detecting, sir. As you rightfully summarize, this is the wife, yes, my Joan. Rather let herself go, you may say. She was a ballycorker bagger! <laughs> it would appear that you don't live in the most comfortable of circumstances. After all, you are a retired army man. Yet you are in the business of renting out rooms. Ugh. I would assume, therefore, you have insufficient means to employ a maid. Would that be correct? That's not right, I tell you. I was second lieutenant in the third regiment. A man has his pride, don't, don't, don't you know? By golly, it's a sorry thing. What a chap, what a chap can't even afford to have a single maid in his employ. Yes, here in London, one's rather judged. A household cannot be considerably worthy of society if it employs no staff at all. Although, in my considered opinion, such concerns about appearances are a folly. You, you mean Mr. Gurdjieff ha has his wife work as his maid? Precisely. Am I right, Mr. Oh, so he's in the wrong. Okay. Alright, she's justified. She's justified, then. Yeah. Only in company, obviously. But listen here, this must be Rain a secret. Tip top secret, please. I got a secret. The raging wife of Mr. Garadel. I would assume the it's like a burn mark and it's like the T. No, that doesn't make sense. Never mind. Now, Mr. Garadel. Is it plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast? Indeed, that's the lith pose the distress lost called a murdering angle. Murder. Ooh, your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. You might have a painful fear of the for supporting arm. Supporting arm? Nope! Mr. Jones is quite something. He's still calling Mr. Gaydev's wife a beast. <laughs> yeah. As a woman, that feels rather uncomfortable. But Mr. Garadab is standing beside her husband as we speak. In other words, he hasn't lost his beloved at all, has he? Oh, how true. So, how about, so perhaps that supporting arm he seems to be propping up to his head has some other significance then. Yes, it does. According to Mr. Shones, Mr. Garadab's pain is tangible, though. Look oh, at that pose of his wings. <laughs> yeah, he's slapped in the face. <laughs> can, we, can we zoom in? <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, boy, look at that bright red mark. Ah, oh, quite something, and clearly made by somebody's hand. Yeah, Mr. Gary Dev has been slapped on the face, it seems. Hard. I've never seen such a clearly defined mark. Whoever could have done such a thing? Well, there's a very limited number of candidates, I'd say. Yep, let's, uh, present that. Sorry, I keep messing up, because I, I used to, like, switch the Switch controllers, and I'm using a, a PS5 controller. So I have to use the, the, the... Uh, the uh, triangle. Snap. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel being revealed by that slapped cheek. <laughs> and of course, the deliverer of that impressive mark on your cheek that refuses to fade was you, Madame Joan Gavardeb. Well, yes. <laughs> you have been desperate to hide that slap mark on your cheek, sir. <laughs> Oh, the blazes. How did you work that out, man? Nothing escapes the notice of, a, of one trained in the art of observation, my dear fellow. That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once. To keep your other side from view. Well, um, huh. Now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Why were you suggested to such a violent slap? In other words, we must ask ourselves what caused Madame Gerardeb to come fly to to fly into a rage. We need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Yes, it is this pile of bill that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Look, this is Eddie on. Did Mr. Shum say that the bills were all f of a lion fodder? Yeah, but now we've established that the lion never existed. Which can only mean 
and the thing responsible for gobbling up all that food was Mr. Gilbert's wife. Mr. Naruto, she's not a person. Or she's a person, not a thing. She's not a person. Yes, well, she's also a person who gave her husband a mighty slap around the face. One so hard that it left a perfect hand mark, in fact. Yes, why a woman would want to hit her husband with such... Or why would a woman want to hit her, her husband with such force, I wonder. I'd love to know the answer to that question. We're gonna find out. Um, maybe this book. What is this bookmark? Ah, oh, someone must be reading this book at the moment. And there's a bookmark here. Look. Oh, is he cheating on someone? Or, wait, no. Is he... Is he cheating on her? Mr. Gary Deb is clearly an avid reader. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah? I don't think this is a bookmark. Oh, no, it isn't. It's a note written in a woman's hand. Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. And look next to the signature here. Lip marks with made with lipstick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a passionate and romantic gesture. Don't get any ideas to such a son. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. So this bookmark is actually a love note, then, hmm? Love note. Mm-hmm-hmm. Yep, let's, uh, present this. We'll call it a love letter, but... Yep, it is this love note that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Oh, James, I love you, yours, Mary. Passionate indeed. Uh, perhaps the sender of this note, a certain Miss Mary, <laughs> is the fly in the ornament here? Yeah, she's mad. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> but I don't know the ballet woman. You don't know her? The note wasn't written to me. It was just in the book. I don't know how it got there. It was just in there, you say? That's right. That's what I've been saying. A likely story! Now listen here, Joan, old thing I explained at the time. I bought the book in the second-hand place, and the note must have already been in there. So, mm, is your name's James? Uh, let's let this fill up a little bit. Let's let it fill up a little bit. So the previous owner of the book was in the notice a bookmark, you mean? That's right, that's what I've been so <laughs> Likely story, for heaven's sake, woman. Look at the name, it's written to James. You can finish, you can pour that up. What is your full name? Yeah, your name is John. John and Joan. My name, in case you've forgotten, is John! <laughs> Likely, a likely story. Are, are you questioning my name now? <laughs> and there we have it. Arouse, uh, arouse the suspicion of the female heart, and you unleash a beast with the most ferocious bite. Uh. Now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious beast carried out one last unimaginable attack. Unimaginable? <laughs> Messed with the rug. The aforementioned wizard can clearly be seen by observing the cup over there. Very expensive woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dearie me. What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Uh, she's looking at something. We don't know what she's looking at, though. This time, madam, I'm afraid it's you who has entered the room. Uh, could it be something behind the, uh, the, the, the screen? I think it might be. Or something on the table. Uh, something. Mm, let me see. Could have been a burn. Oh, yeah, it's a burn. Yeah, it's a burn. It burned. <laughs> Mr. Kidd didn't eat the carpet. No, of course not. But there doesn't seem to be any doubt that the state of disarray in this room is in is a result of her wild temper. No, that's not. Or no, oh, that's true. So this uh, last part of Mr. Shum's section is that we need to fix. We need to always follow Mr. Kidd. Yeah. So it's the candle, right? Because there was a candle on the floor. But we couldn't, we couldn't really look at it. Um, yeah, so this candle on the floor right there. It's, uh, it's a candle. It burned. The garment has been ripped to shreds. Yes, and according to Mr. Shome's deduction, the tears match, the, match those made by an Indian lion's tooth exactly. Oh, look here. What is it? If you look closely at the edge, you can see scorch marks. Oh, yes, so you can. In that case, perhaps the carbon wasn't eaten in the normal sense at all. Let's rethink this, uh, that with this in mind. There's also, um, candlestick missing. 
or a candle from the candlestick missing. Very old candlestick, uh, base looks too small, surely it's very unstable, looks to me like even the slightest knock would make it topple over. Oh dear, that would be dangerous. Wait, take a closer look at this. There are only two candles. There's one candle missing! Didn't notice that before, why is that, I wonder? Why is one of three candles missing from its holder? It's on the floor. Um... We only need to look- uh, okay, so here's the- here's the Ace Attorney, um, problem we've got going on right now. Because we can either present the candlestick, or we can go down here and look at the carpet. But it doesn't say candle, so I think we're gonna have to go with the candlestick. And if this doesn't work, then I am going to be upset. Take that! Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we only need to look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow, and of course, the only possible way out of this logical labyrinth. Yes, the, remem the remnants of a ferocious attack in which the carpet was devoured by- er, devoured are clearly visible. Indeed they are. The scorch marks at the end- or er, at the edge clearly give away the truth. The scorch marks? It would appear that this room was the scene of a little material altercation. Miss Garrett has mighty arm muscles left an impression not only on her husband's face, but on the entire room. The force of her strike caused the candle to fall from the holder. I don't know how my voice is kind of messed up. <clears throat> and in seconds, the carpet was alight and the whole corner of the room in flames. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the most ferocious beast in the world is neither a violent lion nor a vengeful woman, but fire. Fierce as fire. And in this room, the ferocious beast bared his claws and ran amok. Eloquently put, my dear fellow. So you see, there's but one conclusion here. After the sparks of material discord flew, this room was the scene of a fire. Uh-oh. Oh, he's standing. I don't know what he's going to do right now. Mr. Shums, uh, I salute you! <laughs> I that's adorable, I think. Carpet scorched by a small fire. Alright, nice. Deduction complete. Elementary. Oh yeah. We're such a good duo. It's these dashed long winter nights, you know. Nothing to do but read in front of the fire. Luckily, there's a jolly good secondhand bookshop just around the corner. Buy, oh, buy um, all my old novels there. And in the pages of one particular novel, you discovered some rather illicit material. For which your wife admonished you harshly, it seems. Don't know about admonished. Demolish might be rather closer to the mark. And Beast is most certainly <laughs> Yeah. Here we go again. And the carpet... What, was that destroyed with the fire when the candle fell on the floor? For ain't to say it was. Happened in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a bally thing. I was caught between the old stick's rage and the, and the raging flames. We don't have much um, evidence at all, actually. You paint, a to you paint a torrid picture, sir, one that would have been most entertaining. That's sympathy for you. It didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The Bali furniture started going up as well. But to hide the mess behind the screen for the time being. Over there, Mr. Gary Depp? Well, you have nothing more to hide now, if you'll allow me. Alright, evidence, here we go. Okay, that's... Not really much evidence, just a bookshelf, but... Had all my favorite novels in that case, but as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh up and smoke. Gosh. Then the wife started hurling things at me. What a terrible sight it must have been. There was I, back against the window under heavy enemy fire. Um, incendiary books incoming ten to dozen. Words of it, I'm, I lost my favorite, the book called The Lion's Pride. 
The lion's pride? Ah, yes, your notorious love of big cats coming through again. I assure you, the title didn't influence my choice in the slightest. So the poor man really did lose something dear to him as a result of the ferocious beast's rampage. Mr. Sholmes' deductions turned out to be correct once again. It can only be described as, the, as a great British wonder. I tell you, it's total carnage. Flames everywhere and the old stick in full fettle. Out of interest, what time of day was that? Hmm, not sure I can remember. It was two days ago now. Let's see. Around five o'clock, I think. So at exactly the same time, as a terrifying incident was unfolding outside your window on the street below. Hmm, even more terrifying thing on the inside, I can assure you. The whole- hang on, I need to read that. I gotta read that again. I zoned out. <laughs> I zoned out. Um, the flames were everywhere at uh, what time of day? Two days ago, five o'clock. Yeah, so, yeah, same time. Same time as a terrifying incident unfolding in your street below. Then I wouldn't have noticed a dashed thing. A dashed? Dashed? I don't know. Oh, really? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Narahoda. What can I do for you? Well, I think we've got to the bottom of Mr. Garadab's situation now. But what does it have to do with Mr. Natsume's circumstances? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. What? My dear fellow, if you recall, I did say as much from the outset. I warned you that, although I knew the retired army man to be hiding something. I could not be sure whether a secret would prove to be of relevance or not. Screw you. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Narhoto, I mustn't lose heart. Bear in mind that all things fall into one of only two categories. Those relevant to the case and those not. That makes no sense to me. Well, no matter. It is uh, it is of far greater importance that you make up your mind now. Sorry? The visiting hours at the prison will soon be over. Oh no, is that time already? If we're to accept Mr. Natsume's case, we have, we have official paperwork to attend to. I mean, we gotta do it, right? He's got no one else. Uh, that's it, no more time to think. Perhaps you'd like to betake yourselves to bidding us farewell now. I must press supper for Mr. Giridab. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Thank you both so very much for your time. Suzuki so san will be waiting for us, and I'm going to have to give him the answer. Alright! On the move! <laughs> Here we go! Let's see what we're gonna do. I, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna help him, obviously. Wait, that's the wrong place. It's time, Mr. Naruto. We must free back to the prison. Yes, I know. Let's hail a car. Oh, what's the matter? Looks like something's going on over here in front of the Garrett in, in the Garrett upstairs. Oh. I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. You, you call an old, you rum-looking ninny, Pimmy. <laughs> He's the murderer. <laughs> we found the murderer. I mean, not the murderer. Uh, the per- There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than you are dreamt of your philosophy. Who's this Horatio fella? What are you on about? Excuse me? Yeah, what the- Who are you now? I'm sorry, it just looks as though there might be some problem here. And my associate here, Mr. Ryanosuke Naruhodo, is a lawyer, you see. Yeah, a lawyer? What? <laughs> like, this guy's just Wario. If I can be of any assistance, I'd be happy to help. I'm from Japan, but I have studied in English law. Hmm. Fine, I'll be on my way for today. But mark my words. This ain't over yet. Get thee to a nunnery! Do I look like a bloomin' nun to you? Yep, one hundred percent a murderer. I can tell by the way he wears his gems. I do hope you're not injured. Oh fair, wait. <laughs> oh fair, Eastern maiden, thou art so gentle. Thank you. What is that all about? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, that are dreamt of in your philosophy. Uh, I'm not Horatio either. Forgive the inquiry, sir, but are you a lodger here too, in the Gerida residence? Oh, face and maiden, thou art so right! Yes, I do dwell in this humble abode! Mr. Gerida mentioned that he had another lodger, didn't he? This must be the man. 
Do you happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Do you happen to know- wait, do you happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Ah, oh, yes, a gentleman named Natsume. Oh, more worthy a polemist in my battle of words near could there be. Sorry, battle, did you say? Who is the stronger Hamlet or Macbeth? Mr. Natsume and I sparred along into the night. I see. I don't fully understand, but it seems that Mr. Natsume and this gentleman are acquaintances, at least. So fair maiden, so good gentleman. I can tarry here no longer. Fare thee well. I didn't really understand him, but I think he's returned to his room. It seems he's unaware of what's happened to Mr. Natsume, so he can't really help us. With Suzuki-san and the man's uh, and that man's lodgers, the Garadep house is certainly full of eccentrics. Anyway, now I'll go find a carriage. Yes, I'm sure Mr. Natsume is eagerly waiting for our return. Let's hope we can get to the prison before visiting hours are over. Alright, so we met the murderer. Or the the um, the culprit. <laughs> He's still as scared as ever. Ellipsis. Oh, it's you! You're here! You came! Locum student Mr. Narhodo Esquire! I can't believe you came back! I'm so touched! Ah, good old, uh, what was his name? Um, I mean, uh, uh, George Joestar, there we go. We're so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natume. Oh no, think nothing of it, relax. If I ever were a cat, I would purr with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots. Noble, nurturing, never failing Nippodies. Oh no, let's not get carried away. Oh, I quite agree. There's nothing more reassuring than the familiarity of one's naive land. I guarantee this is Mr. Prosecutor, man. On the other hand... Oh. <laughs> it is through friendship transcending international borders that only truly appreciates the fact. Such is my belief, at least. Oh, oh, it's yes, oh, it's oh, it's you! The miserable rotten spy, Herlock Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing here? I have no intention of doing anything, per se. Save observing, of course. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Well, having encountered some curious reading material in that gloomful room, and having unmasked the secret identity of that eccentric pair, I decided I should drop in on my way home to see how our d divested friend is faring. Gloomful room? At least your accommodation here offers a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is the superior option. Anyway, I must commend you on your taste in books. My day has been a delight and cost me not a penny. Oh, you! How dare you, Herlock Sholmes! Oh, uh, I've had as I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted my spirits in those accursed lodgings. No doubt my life will be cursed to worse trial as well. I will I was benumbed. <sighs> what are you thinking, Mr. Naruto? You mentioned that once before, didn't you? That his lodgings were cursed, I mean. And there is much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? Curse is a, a wholly uh, appropriate description, I would say, for the man's lodgings, and indeed for tomorrow's trial. What's that supposed to mean? Mm, tell me something. Cursed trial. Oh, he's gonna be the Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. Natsume, what do you mean by what you've just said just now? About the trial tomorrow being cursed? Oh no, why, why are you looking so grave? You're making me nervous! I was just getting carried away, that's all. I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. No, that's really agitated him. You, you don't mean the trial really is cursed somehow? Yeah, you're probably gonna die tomorrow if the Reaper of the Bailey is actually the Reaper of the Bailey. I mean, the other guy died. We got him off scot-free, but he died. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if you're safe. I don't know if everyone dies or not, but for what we've heard and what we've seen so far, it's the case, so. 
Are you referring to the prosecutor, the reaper of the Bailey? The, the reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please tell me, summarize this succinctly in the 16 salient words. Uh, no defendant has ever survived a trial in which the reaper stands for the prosecution, ever. Is that 16 words? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! Can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly! <laughs> Yesterday, Mr. Narhoto successfully defended someone against the Reaper. But then, after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in unusual circumstances. Mr. McGilded. Wha 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 what? <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, I'm impressed, Mrs. Mr. Sato. You have an eye for detail. Actually, the Lord Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sholmes, surely it can't be that having failed to have the accused convicted, Lord Van Zeeks killed the man himself? Oh, no, we couldn't have, surely. Mmm, I never thought of that. <laughs> you have some wonderful notions. So sorry? The man isn't a mass murderer, he's a court prosecutor, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. Why, well, well, of course he is. Oh, of course he is, then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however, that the real truth about the man is even more terrifying than your hypothesis. What on earth do you mean by that? Uh, the Reaper. Van Zeeks is quite an exceptional man. However, in London's court of law, exceptional does not equate to winning every case without exception. Oh, that's that's good. Sucky sound looks like he's going to cry tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in the British criminal trial, there is both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates based on the letter of the law, whilst the jury offers public opinion and common sense. It is an excellent system whereby the defendant's guilt, uh, guilt is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Right. Criminals, and corrupt lawyers for that matter, can use it to their advantage. By any means at their disposal, con uh, contriving evidence, calling impostors as witnesses, and so on. By such underhand means, those who would want, those who would want, those who would want to are able to sway the jury, which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can fail. Ah, oh, that sucks. But it means the wrong verdict can be passed. It sadly is from time to time, my dear madam. It is the reality of the situation. And that's all right? However, those indicated by Lord Van Zeeks cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. All right. Through the, adjunct, um, the adjunct adjudication, may see them leave the courtroom with their freedom. With months, they all disappear. Within months, they all disappear. It is most striking. Disappear, but how? Ah, oh, by all matter of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the the, ta the Thames and drown. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by a raging fever, or perhaps attacked by highwaymen. Oh, no, no, no. All examples of reality are events here in London, I'm afraid, Mr. Narhodo. So we're screwed. <laughs> we, we're just screwed. I knew it. I'm... A dead dodo done for doomed! It does seem that way. You see, I don't, like, I don't know. There's like no way we can win this, huh? Even if we do, you're dead. This is a very, di like, this is a very different Ace Attorney game than what I'm used to. When you said a cursed lodgings before, you were referring to your room at Mr. Garadep's house, I assume. Do you mean to say you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain. But I'd only seen... I've only been in London a week before I started to notice strange feelings in myself. That didn't take long, then. Everywhere I looked, there were foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. I was sure people were talking about me. I started to become nervous about going outside. They were always staring at me, all the time, from dusk till dawn. So I shut myself away in my room, but even then, that didn't help. The fear wouldn't go away. You must have been very lonely, having been away from your homeland for such a long time. I've had to move a number of times, most recently to, to that room on Briar Road a week ago now. Yeah, why did you choose there? It seems a little inconvenient. 
The rent is cheap. I have so little money it, ap it appealed to me straight away. Of course, I asked why it was so affordable. The landlord just uh, simpered and said, The room is cursed. Oops! <laughs> he quickly tried to cover up his mistakes, but it was too late, so I told him, If you have something to say, then say it, but if not, don't mention it in this place! Yes, well said. But it was true. It was all true. You mean, the room really is cursed then? Ever since I moved in the windowless hellhole, my sleep has been plagued with nightmares. I awake feeling as though I'm being choked to death. And in my waking hours, people are stabbed from the front of me as I walk down the street. I'm branded a killer, thrown in prison. Nobody wants to know me. I'm, I'm surrounded by scary sinister spirits. If only there was someone, just one person on my side. You got me, man. Can no one find it hard to believe me? Really no one at all. To believe, yes. To believe. To believe. Um, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, oh, me, Mr. Naruto. Pray, what can I do for you? It's about the case in the SS Burya, if you recall. The Burya, the Burya. Oh, that case. The one with the snake. Well, yes. At that time, I was the suspect, but you believed in me and listened to my side of the story. And you helped us to investigate. I did, did I? Interesting. What I want to know is, why? Why did you believe in me? I see, yes. You mean... Because you were a, gr you were a grimly dressed, shady eastern fellow found with the victim in a locked room. Uh, well, if you like, yes. I'm a little surprised that the answer requires explanation, my dear fellow. It's quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. Uh, but I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have suspected me a little. I think perhaps you have misunderstood. I neither recall believing in you, nor in that which you were telling me. What? You see, the only things I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. If I should like to believe in something, I do. The circumstances can be hung, could can hang as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I could have, I could have betrayed your trust. <laughs> in that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment, nothing more. Betrayal of trust is an overused excuse, in my opinion. Meaning? Whether or not one should trust another is, in the final anal analysis, down to oneself. It is a matter of whether one can, whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right. He's right. Locum student, Mr. Narhodo Esquire. Whether or not I can believe myself. I trust this dude, I think. Hey, cousin. Uh, a defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in the client, in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. I love you, man. I miss him. <laughs> You're so right, Kazuma. I wonder what this game would be like if he didn't die. Well, my dear fellows, it is time we were leaving, I believe. Already? Visiting hours are now over. The guard will be here shortly to escort us out. There is a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout. Would you care to join me? Oh dear, there is never enough time, is there? Alright, we'll defend you, man. We'll defend you. Uh, Mr. Natsume, if you'd like, in the trial tomorrow, I'd be happy to represent you. Yeah. Why do you look surprised? I'm gonna defend you! Uh, locum student Naruto Esquire. Mr. Naruto Esquire. As I said, I only experienced British courtroom for the first time yesterday. And although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. Something crucial? What to believe in? The defendant, justice, or the truth? How to believe, even. But, I think I've finally worked it out. I've decided I must believe in myself above all else to trust my instincts. Yes, Mr. Naruto! Yeah, we got you, George. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Joestar, are innocent of this crime. And it's in... It's it's imperative in, 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 imperative that we prove that in court. Logum student, Mr. Naruto Esquire, 
I will fight for your innocence until the bitter end, with every weapon available to me. So I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. As I said when we first met, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It would be fair to say, Mr. 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 No, no, I just glitched in real life. What? That your mind was, in many ways, made from the outset. You merely needed the evidence, or the events of today, to finally realize it. Yeah, I think you're about right about that. What's up, Math? How's it going? Hope you're having a good day. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. Yo! Mrs. Sato. Yes? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in court? Absolutely. As I said this morning, you may consider me your personal judicial assistant! Yeah! The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavily on my mind. But it's time to stop looking backwards. It's hard to believe that was yesterday. <laughs> Kazuma believed in me, and Mr. Shomes believes in me now, too. So it's time. Time that I learned to believe in myself. Soseki's son has no one. He's all alone. So it's my job to help him. To fight his corner. Tomorrow, in the courtroom. With all the strength I can muster. Oh yeah. We are gonna... Save this guy, and he's not gonna die afterwards! Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, let's save the progress. Alright, this is getting interesting. I wonder how long the actual trial is gonna be, because this was... This kind of felt like a long uh, investigation.